All right, this is our first formal proof. So we're going to take our time on this one. Um, well, every proof that we're going to do, you see, we're going to have a diagram. We've got a diagram over here. And we have a list of given statements. Those are facts that we know at the start. And then we have this statement. That is the thing we're trying to prove. That statement is also known as the conclusion. We're going to use two column form primarily in this course. On the left will always be the statements. On the right will be our reasons. So in the first case, you can see I've got my first three givens listed. And of course, the reason is given. Well, uh, I don't care whether you count those as line one, two, three, or put them all in one line. That's not that important. What is important is our flow of logic. We have to find out, we have to get from here to here. Now, one thing we do know is that the conclusion will always be the very last line. Once you get to where you're going, you stop. Makes sense. Now, as far as these statements are concerned, we're going to, I'm going to give you a little bit of help. I've made up some theorem and uh, definition sheets from our textbook and um, I'll hand them out to the class and I'll show you how to use them. But right now, we're thinking, all right, we've got these angle measures. What can I do with that? Well, let's have a look at the definition sheets. Well, here is where we've got our definitions that are in our textbook and I've just laid them out for you on these blue sheets, color coded them for you. We'll see the uh, definitions will be in blue. On the left, you're going to see the section and the page number where these definitions occur. However, I must say these definitions on our textbook were not given to us in the very useful form that we like, the if-then form. And so I took the liberty of rewriting them for you. Now I also left some gaps in your sheets. For example, on right angle, if the measure of, a, of an angle is 90 degrees, then the angle is a right angle. I want you to write the converse whenever it's not available, because when you're using these sheets, you need to write them, the definitions that is, in the correct direction. And we'll see more about that when we get back to the proof. But let's just have a quick look at the postulates and theorems sheet. And likewise, the postulates and theorems will appear on this pink sheet that you all have in the classroom here. So you're going to see here segment addition postulate, angle addition postulate, maybe some ways that we can use addition theorems, subtraction theorems, multiplication theorems, division theorems. Some of these come from other textbooks, actually similar or earlier versions of this very same textbook. So I'm going to make them all publish them all for you and use them as you will. But this is your reference. Pink postulates, blue for definitions. Now let's back, get back to that first proof of ours. And you can see we, we already know what we're trying to prove. Angle QFD, well that's this one. And that includes these two angles. And we're trying to prove that it's congruent to HFG which includes these two angles with these given measures. Well, we'll work this one the easiest way we can. We already know how we're going to end because that's our conclusion. And we could say, or it looks like we're missing an intermediate step in this case. In the future, you're going to have to know how many steps, but we're going to make it easy for you in the beginning. And I don't have any information about the angle QFD. But I know this angle. This is given, and this is given. I suppose I could add those two together. Hmm. I could add these two together. And if I did that, I would have those measures. What gives me the right? Well, let's look up on our pink postulates. It's our angle addition theorem, or angle addition postulate, sorry. And now I'm thinking, I've got these measures that are equal, and I'm going to use, use that to determine that the angles are congruent, and that is a definition. You saw that early on in your textbook. Notice the direction that we write it. I said it again, we talk about direction. We know all 
definitions are bidirectional or biconditional. If or however we're starting with with angles of equal measure, and we're concluding that the angles are congruent, therefore we write it in this direction. If two angles have equal measures, then they are congruent. Now we're going to do our second proof, our second example, and it looks very similar to the first, but there's some notable differences. Again, I've got a given one given statement, in this case, one conclusion. Well, we already know what line two is because we said it's the conclusion. Now a gentle reminder here for all my students, I'm going to give you the drawings on maybe on a screen. You have to write, draw them down with a straight edge. They got to be crisp and clean. That's part of your performance standard. I want to see the two column form written out. You got the horizontal statements reason and vertical line here for your two columns. Uh, in this case, I already wrote down our first statement and that it is given because that's where we're going to start. And now we're just going to look at the picture a little bit first. Um, I, let me just call them one, two, three for now. We're just saying that angle one and two are congruent. What measure is angle one and two? We don't know. All we know is that those angles are congruent. If that's what we know, then we're going to put in tick marks because we are going to see it on our drawing. Our drawing is a working drawing. It's so that uh, we can enhance our understanding. Future problems will be a little bit more tricky, so you're going to have to pay attention. But right now, I can see, oh yeah, that makes sense. I've got two, I've got two angles here that are the same. Don't know how big they are. And I've got that other angle. I, I do have the third angle in there, number three, which, you know, it's just, I guess, well, well, we'll see what we're going to do with that. I know this is my conclusion. And if I was using my common sense, I could say, hmm, this angle and this angle must be the same as this angle and this angle. And that looks like, that looks just like the last problem. But we don't have degree measures here. So we're not actually going to add them together. We're going to use a theorem. It comes from our previous textbook. So um, we're going to make it legitimate for you here. And again, a theorem is not a definition. A theorem is something that has been proven. So we can apply it in future proofs. So here's our reason. Now, we're not going to use a theorem number since, first of all, it's not in our textbook. But secondly, the numbers are less important. Um, that's just bookkeeping. Remember, these aren't Euclid's numbers. Different textbooks will have different numbers for their theorems. But in any event, let's read this. If an angle, that's angle 3, is added to congruent angles, those would be 1 and 2, then the sums are congruent. And those sums would be QFD and HFG. And this one is done. Notice similarity to the first proof, but a little bit different. We're going to do a few more like this. Remember, they're not in the textbook, and um, you, got, you got them in class, and they're here on 90 notes. And here we go with example number three in our proofs, and you can see it's similar to the very first one. We're given some segments, and we're given our conclusion. So let's do the same thing we did with angles. We're going to add the segments. And we have the segments, and just like angle addition, we have the segment addition postulate. And just like with angles, we know that by definition, if those two segments have the same measure, then they are congruent. Remember, you need to write the definition in the correct order. Oh, and by the way, look at this drawing. We have no idea of angle measurement. Don't make any assumptions. You can only go by the givens. And our final example in this session, exercise four, again is having to do with segments, but here notice there's no measures. Again, just like the angles. Um, I asked my class, which, well, which segments are longer? Red ones or the blue ones? Well, red ones, blue ones, no, well, it could be the red ones. Truth is you don't know. But you do have a, a set of givens. Take those givens and put in some tick marks on your drawing. Add the tick marks to your drawing. It'll help you see the logical, the logical conclusion. And we know right here, well, we know what the conclusion is, so it has to be what we're trying to prove. And then we can say, look on our theorem sheet, 
that's that pink sheet that I gave you all. And it's going to say right there, if congruent segments are added to congruent segments, then their sums are congruent. Notice that's the one, there's four segments in the picture. You've got one blue and one red, adding to one blue and one red. So again, these theorems come from the previous edition of the textbook, but you're welcome to use them in my class.